What's up everyone? So we have this 30 inch mower here that's suffering from a bad previous mechanic. So let me explain what I was told. I was told that the previous mechanic said the cable was bad and it very well might be and it looks like we might have a broken float or excuse me bad needle don't know. Anyway not the point. So they said that they replaced the cable and from the looks of it I do believe they are right. I mean, it does look like it's fairly new. The owner said, though, shortly after, it had started to develop an incredible taste for belts. In addition to that, in fact, I think I'm just going to turn off this fuel right now because nothing good's happening right now. Anyway, in addition to just devouring belts, uh, he knows a lot of rattle. Every time he puts a new belt on, rattle, rattle, rattle. And over the course of me looking and see what's going on, I originally thought the bearings, but luckily it's not the bearings. However, these have a lot of play in it. The little pulleys on top of the spindle. That's not good, and it's going to rattle. So we're going to have to replace those. But more importantly, the person that put this on so tight. Now let me put this in perspective. When I put this on, there's probably a good three inches right here, usually. And it depends on the machine. I feel like some cables are different, you know, whatever it is. At the end, I'm going to go over how I tighten it. I'm going to do a lot of other work and it's not going to be the point of this video. But in addition to that, it has fried this idler pulley. I've got two belts off of it that are fried and I'm tired of it. So we're going to fix it the right way. So first things first, I need to um, do some work on it. It is going to require quite a bit. I'm going to show you what I'm replacing that we could kind of know the ramifications, not necessarily how to replace it, but what can go wrong if you over tighten it. And then I'll show you how I tighten it. First thing that's going to happen is if you over tighten it, this idler pulley is going to be pretty much the full force of the tension. And it's going to eventually start to wear out. And when it does, it's going to get hot. And eventually it's going to seize. And uh, yeah, pulleys are not supposed to look like that. So this one definitely needs to be replaced. In addition to that, so a little side note here. I've seen a couple of these plates and I can tell the ones that are Xmark or Toro compared to the non Xmark or Toro. The non Xmark and Toro is going to have a wider hole here. While that's not necessarily bad, you do want to kind of keep in tune with either a good aftermarket or at least a OEM one. I have a video where I replaced the with the aftermarket one at the uh, request of the customer trying to keep the price low. But in my recommendation, if it's your machine, try to get the OEM one. These don't usually go out though, so you don't generally have to replace them. However, something that can occur is um, this little area can get egged out over the course of time so you might have to get a new one or the brake it's, you can just replace the brake but yeah if you're already going to have to replace the brake that's getting egged out you can usually buy an xmark kit that has a cable too and more likely than not your cable is going to be trash here shortly so you might as well just get the whole thing so that's number one of something that's going to happen when you, too, when you tighten your belt too tight stay tuned to the end i'm going to show you something else that occurred with tightening a belt that's a little bit different, but let's see if we can figure it out. So, more likely than not, you already know this, but you're going to be chewing through belts. This is one off of the machine. Yet again, same owner, same mechanic, and over-tightening it, chewing up belts. So this is the first belt I had to remove, which is now trash. Those belts aren't cheap either. They're not expensive. They're not cheap. This is the one that came off this machine. You can literally see how it's like getting toasted not to mention the fact that it's been rubbing against like straight up sharp plastic i think this is even part of the pulley right here maybe not but either way that's not good the belt shouldn't look like that 
also garbage. Something else that's going to happen is what just, it's going to be the next part of my day. It's this. So, this can get egged out. Luckily for the owner, this didn't. So that's good. But inside here, this will get egged out as well because you're putting so much pressure on it that it's being like kind of like angled in a way. So what's going to happen is that it's just going to, on here it's round, but on there, if you can tell, has like a, I don't know, two straight areas for the, for the post or the, the name's escaping me right now, but you get what I mean. But right now, that's getting egged out. And because of that, it's starting to shake. What will eventually happen too, is it's gonna fry this bearing and the bearing beneath it. That's not usually a bad thing. Those will go out eventually, but you're gonna prematurely just wear them out. And eventually, if you do it long enough, it's gonna break the whole housing. Then you go from having to replace bearings to replacing a whole spindle. That's expensive well more expensive than just you know taking care of your machine or whatnot but just don't over tighten it you don't run into that situation if you don't over tighten it in addition to that same person i'm imagining probably had over tightened the timing belt here there's a belt in fact it is right there there's a tiny belt that go, goes in between here. See these little marks and these little teeth? The teeth on the belt fit into those little grooves. Well, in addition to that, they over tighten that belt. What is that gonna do? One of two things. One, it's really gonna toast that exceptionally quick now, because now you have a load. When bearings don't like, at least not these types of bearings, don't like to have what they call a side load. Side loads are bad for these bearings. So when they have a side load, they wear out very, very quickly. So now you have a side load pushing that direction and like this. So you have one going back and to your left. So it, it's, just, it's just not a good thing. So now because of that, this is egged out and this one is egged out. So they're both rattling. They're both causing a lot of chatter. So, yet again, do not over tighten your belts on these. There is one good thing about this, the transmission belt, you really can't over tighten. It has a spring on it, it has spring tension all the time. So you really can't mess that up. So, eh, you still probably could if you buy a cheap belt, but don't do that either. So I'm gonna spend a couple minutes finishing my little project here. I'm gonna show you how I'll uh, to tighten the belt. Now here's the problem. I'm not going to show you how to tighten the timing belt because this particular machine is missing. There's like this little plate right here and technically you're supposed to have like a specific dis uh, width. You're supposed to put a feeler gauge in between the little plate and they're supposed to, in fact I think it says it here, five to three thousandths. No. 0.13 to 0.76 millimeter, so it's five thousandths to thirty thousandths of an inch. That's pretty loose, so you don't need to tighten it up. You just have to have enough tension on there where it's not going to slip off. So I'm not going to show you tightening that one. I'm just going to show you how tight I usually put it because, but again, I can't really. I don't have the plate, and the owner needs it today. So unfortunate. However. I'm going to get this done and then we'll go get to tightening the belt that goes from the crank to the pulley. Okay, so this is kind of how tight I keep the belts. It has some tension in there, it has some little slack, but it's pretty good. It's not going to slip off and the teeth are fine. It's not going to be an issue. But look at this. You see, hopefully you can, the hole in there. This is where it was. This is where the hole is. It was tightened significantly more. So the chant, the likely, I shouldn't say that, the miracle these bearings aren't toasted 
which they very well still might be. I don't know. I didn't actually hear this run. Uh, it, it's just amazing. So don't do that. Side note. You can buy whole assemblies or you can just buy the inner piece. The inner piece is a little hard to find, but you can buy it. Uh, if you go, not for whatever reason, a lot of parts diagrams don't have it. And um, unless they stopped selling them, but for a while there you could buy it. Don't remember, but it's these aren't too bad, I think. Well, this is the aftermarket one because yet again, the customer chose that direction, but. I don't really think the aftermarket version of these are going to be all that bad. I still would rather have Xmark, but eh. I think the Xmark versions are 35 bucks each, so it's not too horrible. But if you're going to buy one, you might as well buy two. So I'm going to go ahead, tighten this up. The screw that was actually on here um, doesn't fit, uh, so I'm going to find a new one because I'm not really even sure what was going on there. It was a thinner screw that had, I mean, this, there's threads in this hole, but there was a nut on the bottom of it. It was all caked up. I'm just gonna find a screw that actually fits the threads and put it in like it's supposed to. So it, it's kind of weird. So I got everything more or less done. I found out the reason why this bolt uh, had a, bolt, a nut on the bottom, because the threads are basically stripped out. Couldn't really see it till like there's like, quarter thread left anyway so what we need to do is this on the bale the line is pretty much taut like it's not there's not a whole lot of slack in there which is what we kind of want now here we do want a little bit of slack I'm thinking kind of like right there and there'll be people who will disagree with this I'm sure but Here's the thing, on the end of this cable, there is a Not immediately, because I want to pull on the bale and see. So I'm going to pull on the bale, get like a clamp, and hold it down so I can, we can both look at the tension on the belt. If we want tension, but we don't want a super large amount of tension. That feels pretty good, actually. Now, on the bale, you shouldn't really feel a whole lot of tension either. It should be pretty easy. It shouldn't be, like, loose, obviously, but it should be pretty easy. So I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on there and it's good. The other end is really where it matters, where you want tension in here, and it's pretty tight. So I'm gonna say that is pretty good. For, what I need to do right now is I need to put oil in it. I actually just replaced that whole uh, oil filter and uh, tube. I forget what it's called at the moment. But I need to put oil in it, and belt is belt is good and loose. Something that can also happen is there are bearings in here as well. So these are just little idlers. If you over tighten this belt, then you will can you can easily burn these out. This isn't all that hard to replace. However, what I would recommend doing, if you have the Toro version of this, get the X mark part it's a lot heavier at least in my opinion i've never really had to replace an x mark one even if you did over tighten the belt but i've had to replace a few toros so it very well could just be a cheaper part i don't know i'm gonna put oil on it and we'll give it a start and see how it starts so we all make mistakes but the way to avoid the mistake is this right now i put a couple things on and I'm going to kind of go around and make sure well, that's not going to be fit. I want to make sure that everything is nice and tight. I've already done that with uh, pretty much everything except for this final one because it's a different size. The previous person, I'm assuming, put lost the bolt and put in a random sized one. But if you've 
forget to loose or tighten anything, then, you know, that's pretty bad. It can also cause potential problems in your future. So try not to do that. So we are in the final stretch. While I'm doing that, I'll tell you one unfortunate situation that I had occur, not to me luckily, but well, indirectly I suppose it was to me. I worked on, I don't think it was this person's machine, but it was someone else's very, I think they know them. I think that's how I know this person. Anyway, they forgot to tighten the bolts or the nuts on the wheels when they were doing something with the gears, I don't really know. And the wheel actually fell off and the blades hit the dirt, which inadvertently there was a root in the dirt because it's a little tree area and it sheared the key, couldn't figure it out. The dude pulled on it trying to get it started. He put the tie, the wheel back on as best of his ability. He figured he was just going to push it up on his trailer or get a different one. Pulled on it, but because it sheared his key, it kicked back, broke two of his fingers. Point of the story is tighten everything. So tight, tight. That I know is tight. That is supposed to be like that. Oil's tight. We have oil. All this is nice and good. We should be ready. Now, unfortunately, there was that leak in the carb, so we might be dealing with a problem. I don't know. It's not on choke. At least I don't think it was. Oh. I turned the fuel off because it was starting to leak. Let's do this again. At this point, we might actually have to turn on choke. might need to tighten it a little bit actually just a hair but this is exactly what you need to do turn it off turn it on tighten it and when you get to the point where you think it's good let it run for like five ten minutes with the without the cover on mind you all this is without the cover on you don't put the cover until you're literally putting it away and when you're done go around and put your hand on everything nothing should be hot. If it's hot, as besides the exhaust or the motor, of course, then you have something rubbing or something bad's happening. You don't want that to happen. So keep an eye out. Look at the belt. If it's a different color now, that's probably a bad situation. It might fray a little bit because it is a belt. It's brand new. It has to kind of work its way in. That's normal, but it shouldn't fray a lot. We're talking mini minimum at best. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit more of attention. Like I said, just a hair. We're gonna, I'm gonna do this back and forth. And then I'm gonna bring you back when I get to a happy place. I think I have it at my happy place now. Let me show you. I don't think I need choke, but.
everything sounds real good. I like I said, I'm gonna let it sit outside for 10 minutes with the blades on. It's kind of squirrely because the owner put this, or maybe the previous mechanic, who knows. There's a little bolt on the cable instead of the actual bolt that's supposed to hold it on. It's not like a Z band or Z band wherever you live. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's weird. Anyway, so this is roughly where I've landed on the length and I try to I put the the clamp on the bale it's tight but not too tight I looked at the spring the spring is barely starting to expand if at all which is exactly where I want to get it in my opinion the spring should be there for the play because eventually the belt is going to wobble a little bit and the spring is just kind of there to kind of absorb some of that but I think we got it. Like I said, do not over tighten your belts. You will see so much additional work and expense if you over tighten it. Let me explain something real quick because I'm about to run out of storage space apparently. See all those? They are all here for the exact same reason, except for that 21. But look at the 21. I don't know if you can tell, it's the far one. It's uh, this one. That one has the exact same motor as this. Yet this is 30 inches. If you need more power, you just need to buy a different mower. You need to buy something else. This is, it's powerful, don't get me wrong. It's adequately powered. The 21 is definitely powered enough. But this one, you need to be careful. If you need more power, you just need to buy a bigger machine. You don't need to over tighten your belt. If you do that, you're gonna have more downtime than uptime. So no one likes that. I'll see you in the next time. See you in the next video. Definitely put a thumbs up if it helped you out. It helps me out when you do that as well. Definitely subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at small 101 and I'll catch you on the next video. You have a good night.